Good afternoon. Um, as Neela said, uh, I'm Crispin Blackall, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about Telstra's journey, the journey we've been on to transform our networks uh, and to go into different places. Now, this is going to be probably different to most of the other presentations you've had today, which dive down fabulously into the technology, probably way beyond my means. I'm going to give you really about what's this doing for our customers. So, if I can get a slide to change. Oops, there we go. First of all, who's Telstra? You may not have heard about us. We uh, are an Australian company. We're 115 or so years old, originally the Postmaster General, and we're a full service telecommunications company, which means we go sort of fairly broad right the way through to pay TV, fixed and mobile services, uh, and we sell to enterprise, consumer, uh, and small to medium business, pretty much everything in between. We've got some pretty good assets. We've, we've uh, acquired through uh, a, a company called PacNet, which we acquired in Asia, which gives us about a third of all of the lit fiber in Asia. Uh, we've got uh, a significant number of points of presence around the globe, but most of our business is out of Australia. So domestically, it's there. We've got some interesting challenges happening in Australia with the governments uh, giving us a national broadband network, which gives us a great opportunity to compete and do something differently because revenue we had previously in our old fixed network isn't there anymore. So we've got to do something differently to supply to those customers. We're seeing competition coming in our mobile network. So it's all about how do we deliver new services that will deliver new revenue for our shareholders. So a little bit about uh, the turbulence, I guess, that's taken us along our SDN journey and just showing you the sort of distance that I traveled to get here, and maybe I'm not the furthest, but it's about 8,200 miles that I came to get here for this session. Um, and along that, you know, we started our journey, as everyone does, with a whole lot of RFIs, and you sort of go from an RFI into a proof of concept, and you start working with the technology, and then you do trials. And I think, you know, if you were in the session uh, with Chris this morning, I mean, the first thing he said is trials are great, but they really do nothing for the real experience of learning all the mistakes you're going to have. So we've been through that, and now we're in the process of services. So we're, we've got a lot, of, uh, a lot of work to do. And whilst I'm going to spend a bit of time talking about the enterprise networks and the services we're doing, this is a multi-year journey for us, and it will go right the way through to our core. Uh, but we're not starting there. We're starting with, uh, with the enterprise pieces. It's going to go through our fixed network access, our wireless network access, and then up through our product stack to what we take to our wholesale products, our media products, our consumer mobility, and enterprise. But let me take you into the enterprise. So when we started this journey, we did what, uh, what you should do, I guess. It's talk to your customers. And we talked to our customers to say, what is it that you're looking for? What are you not getting today? And I talked about they wanted virtual services on demand. They wanted data elasticity. They wanted you know, connect in the cloud. But they kept saying, why is it so difficult? Why do I have to go to so many different portals? to have this common experience that we're supposedly getting from you? Why can't I have a better consumption model? Why don't you guys do all what Amazon does and have your network sort of on demand? So we looked at that and we said, well, there's got to be some kind of convergence in the experience to deliver this on demand, elastic, secure cloud connectivity to give customers that differentiated experience. And so, we started this symphony initiative and we set ourselves five goals specifically. One is about defining a unified product experience, increasing our customers' speed to market, and doing that through things like zero touch provisioning of devices that already talked into the network and could deliver that differentiation. Being able to deliver an increased service velocity, so if you've got different types of cloud environments on premise and in branch cloud environments at the edge of your network or in um, a generic cloud to be able to turn those services on where the customer needs them, when the customer needs them, in near to real time. 
activating customers so that they don't have to go through long and complex procedures and having this sort of platform for innovation. When I talk to this about you know, the business case for success in this, you look at how complex and how hard it can be for an enterprise customer. You sell them a, a product like WAN optimization, which might come from someone like Riverbed. A Riverbed WAN optimization solution would require someone to go and architect the solution, work out what their network looked like, work out where they wanted that content to be optimized between the two points, design, build, roll out, had the infrastructure shipped nine months. In this kind of world, when we're doing it all in SDN and we've got NFV solutions and we've got the on-premise and I've got it actually configured, we're talking in minutes. And that's the use case that you're all working to delivered in terms of a customer experience. So when we went through, we started looking at all of our product silos, and of course that's exactly what they are, they're product silos, so access is a totally different silo to the security domains, which is totally different to the network domains and totally different to the cloud domains. And it was all about, well, we've got these great rich assets, but how do we turn that into something that we can deliver differentiated value on? How do we turn it so that when building products, it doesn't take us nine, 12 months to build a product? Well, it started out by actually starting to abstract that away. And when we looked at what customers do, they actually want that ability to say, well, can I just add a site, a new branch? Can I add cloud to that site? Can I get that new capability? Can I add applications, internet, security? Can I turn that into a service? And can I service chain that capability such that it's really easy for me. It's consistent in that experience. I don't want to go into 12 different places and 27 different order forms to create this. I want it to just happen. It's got to be intuitive. So when we started going through the detail behind that, of course, it was about how do you abstract away from all those things and take it up to some kind of intelligent network so that you're not plugging deep into the bowels of your network every single time. And how do you abstract that up so that it enables you to get into your OSS and BSS systems, your back office? Because any service provider will tell you that's where the cost is. It's not in building out the network, it's actually touching your IT. So we started with three key products, and these are the key products that we built into launch. And the first one is about just simple gateway protection. So bringing in a firewall, but it's not just bringing in a firewall uh, as a VNF and turning that on. It's bringing in a firewall as a VNF, turning it on, and having that integrated to an existing MPLS network. So customers have got their MPLS networks from us, now can buy a firewall on demand, pay as you go, not buy and, buy and install a large device, and trial it for a while. Maybe you want to try it for 30 days, maybe you want to use it for six months, whatever your workload and your requirement is, now you're consuming firewalls in the same way but you're consuming them as a VNF inside your MPLS network. Uh, the internet branch and remote access capability is an SD-WAN offer. So effectively, sitting on top of the internet, it extracts the ability for a customer to just order some CPE, have it shipped, zero touch provision, have that ability to have some routing across the internet and to set up a branch cheaply, quickly, and bring on their remote access users. And the SDN, um, data center interconnect one was taking the assets we'd acquired with PacNet, which gave us you know, these incredible um, resources. And, and they were really, they'd, they'd done some really great work with Mirantis, uh, all based on open daylight early on. And they'd integrated um, bandwidth on demand between data centers. So effectively enabling layer two connections between the data centers to be uh, prioritized and provisioned in real time for a customer that wanted that bandwidth spun up, spun down, when they wanted to use it for the amount they wanted. So giving all of the, uh, the navigation around that. So we looked at how do we bring all of that up? And so what we did is we took those and we brought them into this common fabric so that then we could start building new products based on this functionality and be able to bring in new capabilities like self-healing. Um, enabling the self-service of integration across all of those products, and set up a sandbox capability such that 
when we start to talk with new vendors or partners or our own developers, we can actually build new things really rapidly based on this. So we're able to create new dynamic products. And the layers of that are fairly intuitive. You know, you're sitting there with all the work that you have to do today talking into your domain controllers. And it's not as simple as saying there is one um, orchestrator to rule them all, but once you start to break out the components between your orchestration and service chaining, the various VNFs that sit in the network, and then how we turn those into product sets, it unifies the experience that um, I can go right back and I touch back into the core. So when my core colleagues start to deliver segment routing, I can turn that segment routing into, say, low cost bandwidth. So if you're happy to pay for the, the slowest way around the country and make that the uh, benefit, we can turn that into a product and we can turn that into products very quickly. So breaking into just some little detail about how it was done, um, it is all fairly simple. We used TLF as the major orchestration piece, um, pulling together um, some simple Yang model and integrating that back into each component of the stack. So on the, on the left, our next IP network being um, the, uh, the MPLS network con connecting into the cloud, connecting into a customer virtual firewall tenancy and connecting that up to the internet and providing that gateway capability. And it's exactly the same kind of abstraction you see when you go into the internet VPN capability and the same again when you get into the data center interconnect capability. So here you're just doing exactly the same thing. We've got the switching capability there with the open daylight switch into the layer two network, connecting up the data centers. You know, Penn is um, made up of uh, the 27 pops around the world where we actually set this up. We've just integrated another five in Australia. Um, and that connects up into our network. So, you know, we, we're able to really create new and differentiated services. And the kind of things we're starting to think about here is how do you do something else that's different? What else is complex and hard for a customer to do today? And what takes extra design time? So great examples around this is if I'm delivering an IP telephony service for a customer and I have to go and design VPNs for that IP telephony service. So I've got to set up the network capability such, why can't I spin that capability up in the same time as provisioning them with network? Why can't I look and see, with all these data centers we've got, rather than rolling out data centers, ours or our competitors, rolling out a fiber every time somebody needs a new service in a wideband order, which at the moment could have fairly long delays, why don't we pre-provision that capability and why do we set those switches up so that we are then able to provision the services for the customer on demand? Well, that's what we're doing. We're basically changing the way we work. So we've gone back into workflow that's fairly traditional that says, yes, we'll go and roll this stuff out um, only when a customer orders it. And now we're going and saying, well, hey, look, we know the data centers to where our customers are going. We know most of the paths. Now we can just spin that bandwidth up and use SDN to orchestrate that capability. So when it comes to that state of really pulling it together, you've got a, um, a world of saying, back to my starting point, having that unified experience portal, having the unified business layer, and having the intelligence uh, that's going on in the network. And that actually goes from end to end as we change our network, whether those uh, networks are into the consumer or into the end user, where they're premise-based, whether it's in the access components, whether it's in the core, the cloud, in the security edge, in internet products, or in software as a service. And you need to do the same kind of things in every one of these elements. So there's basically gonna be VNFs the whole way through. They're very similar, but how do you think about managing and dealing with each of those VNFs and not starting the same silos that we've had in engineering in the past? And dealing with components like all of the element managers that go across, and Ecom's doing some great work in actually addressing some of this right now because 
Obviously, from a key challenge, you start thinking about an end user scenario where you've got managed devices on behalf of a customer. I might be managing routers on behalf of an enterprise customer. And now I'm going to give them uh, some universal CPE that maybe has four cores in it. So I might be putting four VNFs in the box. So instead of one, one box that I'm now having an integrated management suite sitting around, well, actually, now I have one box with one set of resources, but four VNFs that all have four element managers sitting there. It gets kind of complex. And the job that seemed actually easier because I've delivered the automation and I've delivered a different experience is actually harder to manage. So solving these problems is going to become critical to our success. And I wanted to sort of leave you with um, the vision about what we're changing. So. As, as you think about this network and everything that's going into it, uh, you, you might have seen in the Ericsson presentation, there's this massive growth in what's going on in our networks. So, you know, we've, we've transformed from where we were 10 years ago when we had um, the voice being, say, 80 or 90% of the traffic that goes through the network and the data being, say, 10% of the traffic that goes through the network. And now, 10 years later, that's inverted except, of course, the amount of voice actually hasn't really gone down. Uh, it's just the data that's grown up massively. And the implications of that are that over the next five years, our network is going to have an enormous amount of demand on it. So much so that we've done the modeling, and we've realized that the network required for 2020, um, we've got about 20% of the capacity in our network today to deliver that network. So therefore, we've got to build 80% of a new network in order to deliver what we see our customers needing in that sort of four-year time frame. And that's a fairly big change for us to go through in terms of how we sort of finalize the capability. One last slide is really about just turning this into a slightly more detailed architecture. The challenge for making a lot of this work, and a few of the speakers today have talked about microservices, because when you actually bring it up to that highest level, it's how do we make the IT systems not break what we've built in terms of the networks. So what we need to be able to do is to deliver things like self-healing, to be able to put the, the right kind of intelligence back into the network, you actually have to have a model of your product set. You need to actually be able to look at what that is relative to the services that an end user is consuming and how they've consumed those relative to the values that you set there. That enables your service catalog. It enables how you drive the health automation. It enables the rules around assurance and service orchestration. It enables us to deliver the great experience that our customers expect from our products and services. And so with that, I'll, uh, I'll leave it and thank you very much.